Growing up, I used to have Bible studies with different denominations. Most of them take the approach of following the Bible literally. I used to try to understand scripture in the viewpoint that it was content to just live scratching the surface of what scripture had to tell me. And I was perfectly fine living off the bare minimum of understanding of scripture. An acquaintance, if you will. I lived life like a child in the state that I knew everything there was to know because I knew how to read a sentence. This is great if you want to see Spot Run or the Cat in the Hat stories. As I grew though, older though, I wanted to be able to understand what the big kids knew and laughed and joked about. What, what did parallel or acute mean? What was a parable or communion? It was like I was stuck in Sunday, in Sunday school in the first or second grade as a teen and even into the young adult years. I can equate this also to the following orders in the military when in basic training you follow orders without question, react to situations in almost a robotic mind frame. How to do a push up or even hit a target in marksmanship training. At first we just do push ups on our knees and then moved on to on our toes and then we learned to be able to vary the stance and for our push-ups and focus different mus muscle groups in different areas. In marksmanship, we are taught how to shoot a target. When consistent, we get to move on to consistency. And when we got that right, we were able and taught to adjust our sights to get them to the center of the target. And as we were able to hit the target repeatedly in the center, we would be, we'd be over. We mastered it, and, but then the wind would be blowing hard or it was cold and we were shivering, or it was sunny and the heat was causing the sweat to run into our eyes and burn while we, our eyes while we were trying to shoot. We had to learn in our own way to compensate for those obstacles. I was a mechanic in the Army. I had many straightforward rules to follow, and one of those rules was you could not take parts off another vehicle to fix another vehicle. We called that cannibalism. And uh, we were only allowed to order parts if we needed to, repair parts and mend them if we could, and if not, we had to wait sometimes several days to weeks to get a part in, so your vehicle was down during that time. Even if it was something to be a simple task, still, the government, like most things, and most agencies, they wanted it yesterday, and the system is designed to make it difficult to do a simple task. One day I reported to what was to be my last duty station, and they had no non-commissioned officers in the motor pool. My last unit had just deactivated, and my previous shop foreman and I had just arrived. We get there to find out that out of 12 fuel tankers, they only had four that were functioning properly. So I asked them why the tankers were broken for so long. I was told that they could not figure out how to replace the alternator belts on the pony engines, which are the engines that supply the pump, the power to pump the fuel to the vehicles. Well, there was a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do it, and even instructions with pictures. But the pictures failed to show that the belt has to pass around a hard rubber piece that appears to be solid and part of the metal that surrounded it. And since my first unit was similar and had these types of fuel tankers, I knew I knew due to the experience of struggling for a few hours how to change the belts because the instructions assumed you, you would know that the pieces were, were not solid. So in two hours, we had one tanker that needed a different part. The rest of the tankers that was stood broken for weeks had been fixed within a couple hours. I was talking with a few people the other day and they asked a question and I answered it in my more mature knowledge of scripture than when I was a child. They told me that they were used to less liturgical and literal interpretations of the Bible and that was that what I had said they had been struggling with the understanding and that when they asked their pastors the subjects were avoided or they were unable to answer them. They said they're in one conversation had learned about more about scripture than they had in all their lives at this point. Another time, I fixed a vehicle and it had a problem. 
It's not so simple as replacing it. Another time I had fixed a vehicle and the problem was not as simple as replacing parts and following flow charts in a manual saying, if this is happening X, it is, is the problem. If it's not, then Y make is the problem. Well, one vehicle was broken for nine months. And after spending a couple of hours, I came to find out that the newer model had a circuit board that, is, that was bad, it had fried. And we kept ordering the part, and after getting in trouble for ordering the wrong part, I found out after months of back and forth with the parts company, it was new to, and it would not be in the system for some months. And I knew how to fix it, but was not allowed to. So I broke the rules. I went to the communication shop and got the tools to resolder a circuit board and recreated a path for the electricity to cross. I drove the vehicle, which had not started, is what would turn out to be in over a year. A year of service that it could have been carrying food or equipment or soldiers. Much like an a the adolescent view of scripture, had I not desired and learned to read allegorically, I would have never seen that the vehicle, seen that vehicle run again or been able to break the rules for understanding that the spirit of the rules is just guidance. But like our human mind, it is limited to understand the awe that is God's pr process. We have to understand the greatest tool, in my opinion, ever given to us by Jesus was the parables. So let's look at how this applies to puppies. You teach it to eat, and in certain areas, potty train it, teach it tricks, love it on it, and you, and it will on you, and then play with it and have a bond with each other that when you are down, down, they comfort you. In a perfect world, this would be every dog's life. Now you have a puppy that is taught up just to be obedient and sleeps and eats and just stays out of trouble. They know just how not to bite the hand that feeds them, but truly there is no bond. You may be left outside to sleep, very little interaction with the family. Or even worse, one that is all by itself, no contact with others, and all alone in life. So here being the feast of St. Francis, I wrap up with telling you that God took a man full of daddy's money, who respected the church but was immature, and partied like the son in the prodigal son parable, and loved world, worldly things, even though he partied, he would give to the poor, you know, give a buck to the panhandler, and then walk off feeling good. But God saw his potential and wanted a deeper relationship with him and said, hey Francis, go build my, rebuild my church. So Francis rebuilt a chapel and God said again, go rebuild my church. And again, after the third time, he rebuilt a third chapel with his, he finally realized he was to be the example outside the box for being the walking true example of the gospel. He was so devout and that he feared nothing worldly and even received the ability to speak to animals and would preach to them as he knew that they were all God's creation and loved by him. Now, that is a far cry from look at that cat or that dog to being able to have loving relationships with that same cat or that dog. I don't know about you, but I would rather not just go to the animal shelter and pet an animal and leave. And leave. I would want to go and take it home and develop that bond, the deeper love and passion that many of us believers or childish view believers do not possess. I pray that all will someday. And much like Christ and St. Francis, we need to ensure that during these tough times that we enlighten the simplistic but deepen understanding of what kind of relationship God wants with us. And to maximize the harvest of the vineyard, and to try to save as many puppies, I mean people, I mean grapes we can. And the